same, the same, we shared the same birthday. Uh, a lot of everyone forgets that all the time, but we always go to dinner together and our favorite places, one of them was the Tornado, Tornado Room in Madison and we love going to the Edgewater. We can look over Lake Mendota all the time. Nina always loved shrimp and scallops and Nina always had fresh flowers during the winter months. She loved daffodils in the spring. She'd go to the store and buy bunches all the time. And uh, she always made all her reservations for our dinners and she even always made my reservations for my vacations. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, I know, she knew how to do it because she traveled more than me. Uh, she always took care of my dog when, when I went on a trip and then she took care of, I took care of her dog. So I, we never went vacationing together, but we certainly spent a lot of time. Uh, Nina liked to be the driver wherever we went. So, you know, she just was that more strong and aggressive of that way. Even when she went on vacation, she drove everybody around when she was in Hawaii and Tahiti and uh, I don't know where else they, I don't know if they rented cars in Las Vegas, but she went there a lot. Uh, and of course she loved Bashans. I got a little one hanging here today. So, uh, and she's got a Bashan on her little headstone there, carved in her name, by her name. And I recently found a bibliography, Nina wrote for college when she was 28 years old. So a bunch of interesting facts. At age 25 years old, her mom taught her and her two sisters to swim in Lake Ripley. At age 12, she worked on a tobacco field farm a half a block from her house. And then at 14, they'd get their, their work permits. All the girls would wait till they're 14. And right away, they'd get the work permits and they got jobs. Um, and then at age 14, she spent six weeks in London, uh, in England, London, England, visiting a pen pal. She still wrote for these last few years. And I just contacted her after Nina passed away. Nina got a degree in social work and teaching from Whitewater University, UW-Madison, and MATC. She was highly awarded and many, many times we became friends soon after I moved to Cambridge. Uh, she was 36 and I was 30, even though I looked 28. Uh, in 1982, that's when we met, and our friendship grew stronger every day. Uh, Nina was a strong-willed woman, independent, and type I always make friends with. Nina asked me to be her power of attorney and I figured she should be mine thinking oh uh, uh thinking she called oh, me but I said I'd pull her plug for her and <laughs> Nina continued being there for me whenever I needed someone and uh, Nina gave me her strength and wisdom and a friendship that would last her whole life and mine too even after she forgot my name happily she always called me uh, Nina always gave me special feeling of purpose in my life I'll never forget. I became a better person who cared for her these past several years. Last time Nina gave me a hint, she remembered me, who I was, was June 13th. I always visited her at lunch so I could help her eat and, or feed her. And Nina hasn't been saying much lately and usually has her eyes closed when I fed her. As I was feeding her one day, Nina finished a spoonful and she turned to me and with her eyes wide open, she said to me, you're a good man. I don't know where she got that, but that's, that's nine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think Marie wants to say something. Um. So I'm Marie Drum, and I've known Nina all my life. And, not, um, and Marie was there for me all the time through all this. I could call her anytime I wanted. I had her support that got me through caring and dealing with the crazies at Heritage and all the management and the rot, the staff and all the issues that I had. So she did, if it wasn't for her, I'd be crazy. <laughs> crazy crazy Well, and I'm going on that friendship theme. Um, my friendship with Nina came about because of another friendship that started in 1929. Her father and my uncle played for University of Wisconsin football. And um, it was Noops and my uncle George, and they were avid Badger fans and regular correspondents would do anything for each other. And were friends for 44 years until my uncle died. Um, because of this friendship, many, many members of my family spent summers in Lake Ripley. 
and the Newberts were legendary for their generosity and their loyalty and their spread of food. <laughs> if you ever had a Sunday meal there, you'd know what I was talking about. Um, and I, the reason I'm bringing this up is that um, I have witnessed another enduring friendship with the same qualities, Nina and Paul's. I know, and now I'm gonna get, <laughs> I know you all know how Paul has been there for Nina. But as someone in the front row, I have to tell you that his love and patience and willingness to do anything for her was something to behold. What a gift to Nina during the most challenging time of her life. I'd like to read a, a stanza from a poem, because Paul asked me to do a poem, and I do have one in regard to Nina, but this is, to me, their friendship and watching it over the last five years and 30 years, really. Um, there was someone I loved who grew old and ill. One by one, I watched the fires go up. There was nothing I could do except to remember that we receive and then we give back. Thank you, Paul. Um, and then on a more celebratory note, it's funny how we use a lot of, we didn't read each other's, but the same qualities I think came up. Because I think everyone here knows Nina was quite a force and a character. Um, she was independent, smart, loyal, accomplished, and had a great sense of humor. She had a wonderful giggle um, that uh, could turn into a cackle when she really got going. Um, I'll never forget riding in her Model A um, and later taking rides in her convertible around Lake Ripley or to the club for a fish fry. Um, going to UW football games with Nina was an experience. My badger regalia and enthusiasm couldn't begin to compete with hers. She loved life, and that's how I'm now going to remember her. Um, I'll conclude with a poem about called Success by Ralph Waldo Emerson. This is all Paul asked me to do with the other stuff. It's just extra. Um, to laugh often and love much. To win the respect of intelligent persons and affectionate children. To earn the approbation of honest critics and to endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to give of oneself, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To have played and laughed with enthusiasm and sung with exultation. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. So I'd like to pass this, pass mine around everybody and we just kind of hand it to each other. And, uh, before I Twitter. and Paul and I wondered if anyone else would like to say anything, a memory or... that she never had children because she would have been a great mother and she was very 
very good to my sister and I when we lived with her. Um, very strict. Oh my goodness. I thought my mom was strict. And, uh, <laughs> she was a lot more strict than my mother. But um, anyway, she was just the most wonderful person. And, you know, I always asked her why she never married. And Paula and I were talking and she had been engaged twice, you know, and she almost got married, but she never did. And I don't think she ever regretted it. Um, you know, she was very happy and she just was probably one of the best spirited persons that I've ever met and just very wise beyond her years. Mm -hmm. And she will be greatly missed. And my mother is very sad that she couldn't be here today. And so is my sister. So. But thank you all for coming. I pulled a little dirt out of the hole so anyone wants to put some on for her. Um, that's, that's what you can do because I'm going to, I'll help her a little bit. So, you know. Anyone else want to? Jennifer complained of not being deep enough, but I guess that's what they do here. 